Welcome to the Empowered Wife Podcast, where it's all about fixing your relationship without your man's conscious effort so that you feel desired, taken care of, and special, even if your relationship feels completely hopeless. I'm Laura Doyle, and today the coaches and I are sharing about using the six intimacy skills with everybody. These are the true stories of how certified Laura Doyle relationship coaches have used the six intimacy skills, not just with their husbands, but with other people they want to feel connection and love with, or at least not animosity and tension, including in-laws, parents, children, and friends. The Worst Relationship Advice of the Week Award is on hiatus this week, so we could make room for the amazing stories of what happens when highly trained relationship coaches turn their skills onto other relationships. Before we start, I want to invite you to think of someone in your life that you have a difficult time with, someone who's challenging, but that is either part of your family, your work life, and your circle of friends, and therefore, you're going to be interacting with that person. Who in your life? is driving you buggy. Do you have someone in mind? Can you picture that person's face? Good, because what you're about to hear is a recording of our monthly storytelling meeting for coaches only. We're talking about how we use the six intimacy skills, not just with our husbands, but with everybody around us. Not only does it help us create connection, ease, and love everywhere we go, It makes us feel more dignified and confident. If you have a difficult relationship with anyone, you're going to want to hear about what they did to get a much better response. I invite you to listen for what you might be able to do as an experiment to have an easier time with your challenging person. See if you hear an idea that resonates with you. If you'd like to be my guest on the Empowered Wife podcast and share about how you fixed a struggling relationship using the six intimacy skills, I would love to interview you. Just go to lauradoyle.org slash podcast dash guest to let me know that you are willing to make a big contribution to ending world divorce by telling your relationship story. I look forward to meeting you. That's lauradoyle.org slash podcast dash guest. So today we're telling stories about using the skills with other people besides just our husbands um, and how how that's worked for you. So it could have been your kids. It could have been your mother-in-law. One story that stands out for me about once I really learned what respect looked like for men, it really changed my relationship with my dad entirely because one of the things he used to do was go on these uh, political rants. And I mean, he would pound the table and he would talk louder and he would swear and he was just kind of monologuing with us. And my stepmom and I would just both be like, okay, dad, just, you know, like, you know, know, calm down. Like, all right, all right, all right. And roll our eyes, be really, really disrespectful with him. And so um, one day I realized like, oh, that's, that is probably, that's not really the kind of relationship I want to have with my dad. I I would like to be more respectful and have more intimacy with my dad, more connection. And um, so I decided the next time he went on a rant, I was just going to say, I hear you. And just be like, I hear you. Just kind of really give him the floor just as long as he wanted. And he just like, didn't go as loud, didn't go as long. He, and he kind of just finished up, like he felt heard. So he didn't have to resort to the antics that I think he was probably using to feel heard. And I feel like it's probably been, it's been years since my dad has gone on a political rant with us. He just doesn't do it anymore. So the minute I stopped resisting his rants um, and he felt heard, it, it went away. So it was really, it's really gratifying. And my, my relationship with my dad is it's so good. It's so sweet. Like we just are so tight and we used to not be tight at all. So I really appreciate having the respect skill to use with my dad. So, uh, but I would love to hear your stories about who you used the skills with, which skill you used, and what was the outcome of that? So who wants to start us off with a story? Oh, okay. I have an amazing one with my mother-in-law. This was a while ago in Coach Practicum. We did this. I was inspired from everybody else because everybody kept sharing stories that they were doing it with people other than their husbands. And I was like, hey, like I haven't transferred to that stage. 
So she lives two doors away from us, but she like never comes over. Like completely not a part of my kid's life. Unfortunately, it's her choice, but that's the way it is. So I really wanted her, like I wanted to, I was almost just like experimenting with the skills to see like if it would work. So, um, so I called her, I let, she, she didn't pick up the phone, but I left a voice, um, a voice message saying, you know, I'd love to extend an invitation to come for Friday night dinner. And, um, you know, I miss you. And, you know, I love, I love how much you're, you want to be part of our life. And my voice cracked a little bit in that. Cause it like, that was like kind of a combination of a few skills, like expressing a desire, um, SFP, and um, miss you while being vulnerable. And anyway, so I was like, okay, let's see what's going to happen. So she calls my husband. She's like, okay, I'm coming over Friday night. And everybody was like shocked. Like she never comes. And if she comes, you have to literally like drag her, like go to her house and say, come, let's go beg, plead. Um, We're not leaving till you come for a meal. Like it's like, and here it was like, it was unbelievable. I was just like, wow this works. <laughs> yeah. so that was like amazing. That was like an amazing win. Yeah. That is an amazing win. I am, I got chills from hearing the vulnerability was really the overarching thing that stuck out for me. Cause especially yeah. you probably have felt rejected by this woman because she doesn't, yeah. she's not, or she yeah. never comes over. And uh, so it was such a generous, um, yeah. So vulnerable way to, to communicate your desire. Yeah, oh, beautiful, yeah. beautiful win. Love it. Thank you. All right, Teresa's got one too. Thanks, Teresa. So this is actually a story about being a step family and and something that happened this week that kind of brought it to a head. But uh, my husband and I have five children between us. He has three, I have two, and we've been married 26 years and for the first several years, there was tension between me and the stepdaughters. And there was somewhat hostility between my husband and my boys. And when I started to learn the skills, I just started paying attention to how I spoke, how I focused on, on his daughters. And I used to point out their flaws, you know, when they were dishonest or something, you know, I would say things. And I decided that I was going to start focusing on their strengths and what I appreciated about them and only speak out loud, you know, wow, she works so hard at this, or she's such a good mother, or I would just comment, only comment positive. And it really changed you know, it gradually, our relationships improved. And I noticed that my husband started doing the same thing with my boys. He started focusing on their strengths and not being critical or saying mean comments. And this week we celebrated, uh, kind of did a belated celebration for our birthdays. My husband and I have birthdays close together and the kids were over and the, uh, I mean, they're all adults now. And, uh, the daughter who I had the most challenge with had the most tension between us. She wrote in her card that how much she loved me and how I'd become the favorite person in her life. And she really trusts me, reaches out to me and both of the daughters do now. And the relationship with my husband and the boys, you know, the things they wrote in the cards too, were just so touching and they just enjoy and accept each other. And our family has just become, I mean, amazing. I never thought we could have such connection as we do. And I think it started with the skills and just really focusing on their strengths and and appreciation and respect. And uh, yeah, so I'm really grateful for that. Oh, did we lose Laura? Oh, Teresa, I was so moved to tears with your story. Being a step family myself, I totally understand that tension. And I just love how you focused on the positives and changed the culture in your home. I'm so touched by your story. Thank you for sharing. Wow. Who else? Kristen, thanks. 
I'm so touched to have learned so much already um, just in these stories. Um, so here's a story that I've, I've shared before, but I would love to fine tune it. Um, before the skills, when my college son would have any kind of problem, I would drive up to where he is and try to handle his situation with money or whatever he needed or what I thought he needed. And it was a great cost to me because I would lose sleep. I would drive at five in the morning because he was six hours away. I would maybe jeopardize my job and I would just panic in his situations. And then I learned the skills and I realized I'm going to stand for his greatness. And one time he texted me and he said he had a, this is during the skills and I was learning that he had a disastrous night and he needs to stop drinking. And I texted back, you got this. And I put like those, like an emoji of a muscle and a heart. And this son is a, like a pretty tough guy. And he texted back, I love you and a heart. And it was so sweet because that's not the kind of guy he used to be, you know, and he just to like say, I love you. And fast forward, he's done with college. He has a long-term love. He's working. And um, yeah, and, I, and, I, and I'm getting good night's sleep. And I put my phone at silent at night now. <laughs> and I'm not into it, so... <laughs> Oh my goodness, what a beautiful story of turning that around, both by standing for his greatness, expressing that positive son fulfilling prophecy, and letting go of that worry, choosing your faith over your fear. And look at how he just matched all of your belief in him. Oh, so touching. Oh my gosh, Laura's back too. So, Laura, by all means, jump in here. That was so touching, Thank Kristen. You. Thank you so much for sharing that. Sun story. Mm -hmm. oh, Thank yeah. you. Thanks, Kristen. All right. Who who else has one? Shanit's got one. Hey, Shanit. Hi. So Hi. this is a story about my mother-in-law. <laughs> it's a it's a long story because I I remember when we married, she would like pull my husband away from from me on the when we were in front of the like the ceremony he would pull, she would pull away him away and i always carried that resentment with me and i kind of used to hate her really like despise her i would say that it was the worst part of my my husband you know my mother no she was so controlling everything that that she wanted to be done was done you know my 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 husband always did what my, my mother-in-law said. And so I felt like I was the last person to, to be listened by my husband. And so when I found the skills, I said, okay, let's, let's see how I can use them with her. And so I started to fill up with self-care before I went over. <laughs> that was very important. And then I would uh, express gratitude for the meals she prepared. because She does huge meals like, like three times a week. And so it made me not have to cook. So I expressed gratitude for that. And I, it used to be like a constant to see how it would work with her. And I could see that it started to soften her towards me. And I wasn't so resentful. And whenever my husband stayed over, or like stayed longer with her, I didn't resent that time he wasn't with me instead of being with her. And on the last mother, you know, um, happy Mother's Day, what's it called? Uh, yeah, Mother's Day. I <clears throat> congratulated her on her, and I said, thank you for being such a generous mother, and thank you for gifting me my husband. And she responded with lots of, oh, lots of hearts, and it was very nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And so it sounds like your relationship with her is pretty transformed from where it was. I don't see so your resentment is, is gone. Yeah. Would you say it's gone? It's all it all left the building. Yeah. It did. I think it left the building, and I now I can hear the heart message. Whenever she's trying to control a sibling or my husband, I can see that she really does care, and she thinks she knows the best. So, but she cares. So I can really hear it, and um, yeah, I can see myself in her how I was before. So, familiar. Oh. 
beautiful. It's beautiful. That's very moving. It's it's so nice too to have a mother in law in your corner instead of as your enemy in a way, right? She's she's there in the tent with you, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? As part of your family, and um, what a great asset to yeah. And she cooks three times a week, so you don't have to. So yeah, yeah beautiful, Shani. Great job um, showing up so with so much love for your mother in law. Thank yeah. you. Okay, so I'm going to be bold today because I do have a story. And um, I have a 16-year-old son. And anyway, uh, lately he he had been getting kind of mouthy and just being uh, a brat. And I was just really getting irritated with him. And uh, we had a little um, moment where he, I'd ask him to do something and then he wouldn't do it. And then he just bossed me. Oh, just, oh, I just want <clears throat> to. And you know, then I kind of like, you know, I turn into this person. I don't want to be like a rage monster and give me your phone. And I mean it, you know, that kind of thing. And so, you know, I'm like, I don't want to be this person. And so eventually that, you know, I'm like, okay, I need to, what skill could I do here? Okay. How about I hear you? So we were in the kitchen and he came home from school. He says, mom, why don't you clean this kitchen up? You don't do anything all day. You could clean this kitchen up. Look at these dishes. This is my pan. I like this pan. And it's always dirty. There's two of these pans and they're always dirty, both of them. And I said, I hear you. Yeah, why don't you clean this kitchen up? You don't do anything all day. You're right. I hear you. Thank you for sharing that. And, you know, kind of just a little banter going on. And and then he smiled at me. And that was kind of the end of it. So I, I guess for me, I'm like, hoping I I mean I was trying to be respectful and I guess so then I get lost in my story but I guess the connection piece for me Laura was the smile because I'm pretty sure he knows he was you know that's not how he should talk to his mommy (laughs) but uh anyway it was just that little connection smile and it could have gone downhill where I'm taking his phone again it could have gone that direction yeah, I just I love the dignity part of it too, Lynn. Like you were so you were so calm and self-possessed and you weren't that person. You weren't that get me your phone. You're right. That that woman yeah. uh, we've all we've all been her. And she's no fun to be. And you didn't and so of course he was of course he was smiling at the end, right? It, and it's almost I mean, I'm I'm on his paper, but it almost sounds like he did feel a little convicted, right? Because he was it could be like a self uh uh, yeah, it's, it, it sounds like he maybe hurt his own conscience, right? I'm kind of hoping. Yeah, that's yeah, what we'll I'm see. Thinking. We'll hey, see. How do I end the story? Because that's what I'm hoping. Because like, oh my gosh, what if he didn't? What if he's going to talk to me like that all the time? You know, there's that <laughs> fear. You know, like, oh no. And or what if he talks to his wife like that or his whatever? You know, any future yeah. woman. Yeah. Yeah. Kind and, of like with my dad, I thought he was going to continue to rant because I was just listening too. So but it was the opposite. So hopefully. yeah. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll be interested to hear how that changes things. For yeah, you. I hope. Yeah, it'll be interesting because um, just today I had another opportunity. I I went the wrong direction, and I'm like, mm, I could have used. I hear you again. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's so, well. That's yeah, that's how we all we all get the hang of these things is by going. Oh, rearview mirror. There it went. There it went. Yeah. 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 I love that you use that with your son. I see. Um, I'm. I'm the perfect mother still because I have no children, but I see other mothers losing their dignity with their kids and um, gosh, it's really painful. So how cool that you kept, you kept that nice connection with your son, even though he was being a little brat in some ways, right? Saying you don't do anything. So yeah, yeah. it's good stuff. But, and he's it. got a little bit of truth to that. I mean, I could do the dishes and have them done, but, and then, and then the little extra that I threw in there was, you know, for a day or two after that, I'm like, Oh, I was just finishing cleaning up. You, you know, just kind of like I I clean this for you. you know, just. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> I hear you. It's always I option. You. Yeah. Good, good job using. I hear you. I love it. All right, uh, Inga's here. She's got her hand up. Hey, Inga. Hey, hey Laura. So happy to see you. 
Well, yeah. I was thinking I am using the skills with everyone in my life. Like really, really. And I was like, what story can I share? Because I do apologize to my son really very often. And I use vulnerability and saying, you know, I'm not my best self. You know, I really need five minutes and, you know, many, many skills. And then I remembered the breakthrough that we had this summer together with my sister. She's a surrendered woman, too. Um uh, we have a future sister-in-law for, for my, my, my brother's girlfriend. And her entry into family was very rough, like, like really rough. She, she came in with, uh, we hated her <laughs> because she was, <laughs> she was like, she was, she showed up so disrespectful and we like, we can all like jumped on her. Like, Oh my gosh, you're so, like so bad. And you do this bad and that bad. And you, you know, we really had silently hated her. And uh, then I, you know, had a lot of thought about it. You know, she needs some skills because that's my brother. <laughs> you know, I, I really, you know, wanted the best for my brother. And uh, like, and, uh, and lots of thinking about it. And then I thought, oh my gosh, this is so disrespectful to my brother, what I'm doing. He made a choice and I'm questioning it and I'm not approving like, how come I thought I know what respect is <laughs> and um then uh this summer my sister came to visit and she lived with me for two weeks and so my brother and her girlfriend was coming here more often and I made an alliance with my sister and I said you know we got to do this well we have to look for the but the good qualities that she has we really have to focus on what we want to increase and really respect our brother's decisions here. And, and she resisted in the beginning. She said, I'm not going to participate in this. And then they came and I heard my, uh, my sister saying, oh, and I see you're a really good couple. You're really a good match in, in this one. I'm like, yay, she's doing it. <laughs> and so we really started for looking for her really good qualities and focusing on the positives that she has. And we kind of really started liking her. And uh, and uh, and such a strange flip happened. All of a sudden, our brother started her uh, treating her badly, because I think it came from in the previous. Like, he had to defend himself, like to prove his decision being right, and he didn't even, you know, like he was taking his territory. And now all of a sudden, we, when we were so kind to the, to the girlfriend, he really started like to do. Uh, like strange things <laughs> like, and me and my sister we were like oh I, I really feel sorry for the girlfriend like <laughs> she's like like why she doesn't deserve a treatment like this and um yeah well uh i don't know if she will be the sister-in-law or not but we definitely came to love her and appreciate her and she's coming to my house more often now because she feels welcomed yeah and even even our like our relationship in the beginning like it started with her writing me a nasty uh message like get out of my relationship I <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know it, it was a rough start like really rough start and um i've got chills i've got chills thinking uh, in how much things can actually the the power that i experienced in just changing the way I'm showing up and how he changed and, and she changed and my sister changed. Oh, like it's, um, I would call it a miracle. <laughs> yes. It sounds like a miracle. It really does. And you, you singly, single-handedly changed this whole dynamic in your family. It sounds like, cause your sister's showing up different. Your brother's showing up different and his girlfriend's showing up different. And it sounds like you feel uh, like you're enjoying more really loving your sister, your future sister-in-law or potential sister-in-law than you were hating her. <laughs> yes. It feels better. <laughs> yeah, much more better. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. I can sure relate to just deciding to hate someone and, and kind of <laughs> just going down that road, right? Like, oh, and then having someone to like having your sister to like kind of, you know, grab with her. So yeah, that's a, that's a great story. It's just a, a great illustration of you just choosing love, choosing to create love in the world. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. It's amazing. I really, and, and the empowerment that I feel, I feel like a, like a, 
like a, such a powerful witch. Yes. <laughs> really? Like, yes. Like, yes. Like, right? like, oh this my is, God. That's changed, changed so much. Yeah. You have magic. You have superpowers. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah. Good, good job. Great story to illustrate your Thank superpowers. You. Thank you, Inga. Love it. All right. Melissa's here. She's got a story. Hey, Melissa. Hi there. So excited to be here. Yay. <laughs> um, so for me, this is, I know it's like with somebody else, but this is a little extreme. So this is uh, kind of a, a relationship that I had with myself. Um, so pre-skills, I was anxious all the time about everything. Um, you know, I had problems like falling asleep at night. You know, I felt stressed and uncomfortable on planes and taxis and trains, and I had to travel for work. Um, and anytime I left my kids behind with anybody else, um, even my own grandparents, you know, even when I left my dog, like for the doggy daycare place, I was like stressed out. Like I just was full of angst, like all the time. And, and I, I really, the older I got, especially when I had kids, I didn't even enjoy travel as much. Cause that was like, that was like my thing. That was my husband saying, we used to do that together all the time. And I was just stressed out about it all the time. And I just, I lived in this world that I didn't trust anybody or anything. And I really, I really didn't know until I found the skills, how that changed my life about learning, um, you know, this overwhelming sense of control that I had, how it was negatively impacting my life in every single aspect of my day. Um, and I mean, like, you know, went from like anxiety medicine to no anxiety medicine. And when I learned to like relinquish control, and stay solely on my paper, which is still, you know, daily challenge. <laughs> I just, it's like my world just opened up in so many ways. And like, I feel like I have my life back. Like I'm like, you know, you have that freedom as a kid where you just, you know, you're kind of, you know, you're free. You don't have any worries. It's like, I have that like childhood excitement of adventure again. And I'm like, I'm back to traveling and, you know, I fall asleep easily. And my kids are, you know, playing with other kids and having these amazing connections with other people that they wouldn't have had because I, I can allow that. Um, you know, I just, I didn't realize how the control was like suffocating my fears. Like I was just, I was suffocating all these fears and then COVID came along and I'm like, Oh, well, here's the, here's the test. Let's see how this goes. Right. <laughs> And I've even seen my own progress like throughout COVID. Like there's there's COVID in my son's classroom right now. And I just know, turn to self-care, do my thing. He's got a mask on. He's not going to die. Everything's okay. Like it's, it's out of my control. And sometimes bad things happen in life and you got to just live for the moment, right? And like, I have enjoyed the skills and my life. And I just have this miracle of, of just not, and this freedom for myself, like that I have experienced in no other way with, with relinquishing control. So that's, that is my skill with myself. And I, I hope that still fits in the, in today's topic. I, as my- I love that twist on, cause it really, um, it is always about us, right? It's not ever really about our husband. We, that's the, that's the illusion that they're the thing that's making us anxious or whatever. So I love it. I love hearing that. Uh, and you're so specific in your storytelling, right? I was I was nervous on planes. I was I was anxious when I left my kids, when I left my dog. And to yeah, I was on anti-anxiety medicine and now I'm not. And you used to not be able to sleep. How's your sleep now? Fantastic. Oh my Fantastic. gosh. Like that's that. a miracle, Melissa. That's a, oh, I, I love your twist on. Using the skills with someone else besides your husband. You're like, ah, oh, I used them on me. me every <laughs> minute of the day. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's fantastic. It's exciting to hear yeah, that the skills cured your anxiety. Love that. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. All right. So uh, Anne is here. Hey, Anne. She's got Hello. a story. Hello. How are you doing today? Well, my story is similar to yours. Uh, my brother is on opposite sides of the political fence. And um, we, I used to avoid talking to him, even though I thought about him, I cared about him. And I thought if I call him to find out how he's doing in this other area, he's going to bring this up. I'm going to have to listen to him ranting and dissing the person I like. And it would, it's just every time I would just say, no, I'm not doing it. 
So then I started thinking about it and how it was stopping me from connecting emotionally to someone I cared about. So I I decided I would try on I Hear You uh, in case he brought it up. So we talked on the phone and surprisingly, he didn't really uh, go too far with it. He he basically just started talking about it a little and I, I said, I hear you. Mm-hmm. And then it just kind of went away. He didn't even talk about it very long. Um, which normally he would have gone on and on. And then I would have been like, oh my gosh, I have to defend myself and I have to give my opinion, which is what used to happen and which used to really frustrate me. So I didn't have to do that at all. And we were able to talk about other things that were important. And the beautiful thing is that my relationship with him really grew just by that little, that one little skill. And when it came time for me to... Um, well, two things. I had my big six O birthday, and my sister arranged a party, and my brother was there, and every, you know, and everything. And so that was nice. And then when we were going to buy a new car, uh, my brother arranged to have me go to a dealership where he knew the guy, and he gave me some special treatment. So that was really awesome. Uh, so it's just beautiful to see how that little adjustment help me connect with my brother. And I wish with all my heart that I would have known you, Laura, before when my dad was alive, because he was the very same way. And he would be the one to pound the table. He got so, so fired up. Um, And if I would have known to just say that, it would have been so much easier. So thank you for sharing all these things with us. And um, so that's my story. Uh, That's beautiful, Anne. You just made me yeah, you're making me cry. <laughs> it is, it's nice to have these. Yeah, no, I, in a good way. Mm-hmm. It is. It's so nice to have the skills. Um, yeah, while while we can still have those relationships with people, mm-hmm. like like with your brother. I don't know why that's making me so cry so much, but I guess um, yeah, I probably don't have that much many more years with my dad. And it's it's nice. Yeah, I'm good, just a pile mm-hmm. of mush. Okay, but anyway, that's a great story. Oh. <laughs> you, did, you did a good job. Yeah, and I love I love that um, you're able to receive from your brother too at the car dealership mm-hmm. because you because you were able to just listen to him and didn't have to. And it sounds like your energy preceded you, and he picked up on that right from the beginning of the call. And there was he had less energy around mm. insisting uh, right. about right. the politics. So yeah, yeah, that's beautiful. Good job, Thank Anne. You. And I, you look great. I did not think you were 60 oh. at all. Oh, you thank you so there. much. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Appreciate it. Good job. All right. And Stephanie's got a story. <laughs> hey, everybody. Uh, I'm so torn because I want to share my story, but my client yesterday shared like this amazing story too. Oh, whichever one you, whatever you think. I trust you to make that decision for okay. our, our family. Well, Okay, for sure I have the mother-in-law and I think someone else told my story where I just, they speak Spanish. I'm like, I'm the third wheel in my own home and I just felt, always felt so excluded and left out. Like they, my husband and her were connecting more than me. And um, so yeah, I, just, I tried on the SFP because I thought we couldn't communicate. And I would go communicate through Marco and he gets so frustrated. So I started saying, yes, we communicate well. And, uh, and I remember a time when I dropped off the kids at her house, you know, I was just going to ditch them and run. And instead she invited me for dinner and I went in and uh, I like, I just stayed there for hours and we would talk for hours. My mother-in-law, I would choose to stay there when I was a free woman with my own time. Um, so that was great. And um Okay. We have in-laws visiting right now and they like they barely speak English. So the same thing could come up of being, and I just haven't felt left out at all. And uh they're like they're the best guests ever. They were washing our dog yesterday. <laughs> like um she yesterday she made lentils and I said, Oh, yeah, I want more lentils. And then I go, Oh, I shouldn't have said that. Because now today she's spending her last day here. <laughs> Making me more lunch. I couldn't wait. I just had to go. I mean, yeah. That's sweet. Yeah. I love that story about your mother in law and now, and all your in laws, apparently. So, yeah. Well yeah. done. Okay. Well I'll done. save the uh, client story. It's so good. Oh, no. I want to hear it. That one. You want to hear it? Yeah. Okay. yeah. 
She just in the past six calls, she went from her engagement had been broken off to a, now he proposed again and they're going to get married. And she still had this. So now it's shifted from, you know, the, that relationship to his children. And especially he has these twin daughters where one, she, she had complained in the past, like they they won't, won't even say hello to me. They go hug everyone else and that she was excluded. So she created a new SFP about, um, you know, feeling connected with, with these uh, daughters. And the other day she was at their place of worship for a talk and she was just, you know, being this goddess of fun and light, talking to other people and somebody comes up behind her and embraced her. And it was the twin daughter. She gave her a big hug, invited her to, oh, let's go get our nails done together with the client and her daughter. And they went and uh, they had the most wonderful time. And then that twin daughter, oh, we should do it again soon. And so my client said, I don't know if she heard my SFP echoing in the universe. (laughs) It was so beautiful. (laughs) It is so beautiful. It is. It's crazy how, yeah, she heard it echoing in the universe. Her energy was such that she came up from behind to hug her. That is incredible from not hugging her at all. Wow. I love that story, Stephanie. Thank you so much. Those are both Thanks for me. Share extra. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And Mila's here. Hey, Mila. Hi, Laura. Hi. I also have a parenting-in-law story. It's a gratitude story for me. So um, I just I was so focused on what they they do wrong constantly, right? So the way they live their life, the way they live their lives, the way they have uh, raised my husband, everything he I didn't like about him. Of course, it was their fault. I could link everything back to how they are and how negative they are and. Um, yeah, and I, I would go like crazy in my head every time I think about them. I was just going into the, I would go into those um, negative thoughts for hours, like obsessive, and that caused so much fighting because it needed to come out at some point. So I never said anything to them, thankfully, uh, but I did to my husband, which is probably equally bad, and we fought a lot about that for years. Um, how bad they are, and they he was just so perplexed as to why I keep bringing them his parents. <laughs> it's like, you know, what is it? And it was just this obsessiveness about their badness was just ruining my, my relationship with him, too. And I decided to stop and decided to, to just focus on, um, What's good about them, right? What I like about them. And to stop obsessing about what's bad about them. And I started seeing actually how great they are with our kids, right? They're amazing, amazing grandparents. So the kids just love it. Every time we say we go to open Oma, they're they're ready within a a second, right? So they love them so much. They get so much love there. Uh, And my husband has a couple of good qualities too. And I, I guess that comes from them too. So I started seeing that and, and suddenly that negativity that I was holding just disappeared. And I was able to, so the fighting stopped with my husband, of course, about that. He was joking the other day around, he, you haven't mentioned my parents for a couple of years now. I'm like, yeah, (laughs) I kind of like them these days. And interestingly, I started seeing even more good, just more things that I could be grateful for started happening just a couple of months ago when my mom was in a hospital, they offered to pay half of her surgery to help us financially, imagine. And also um, now it's my birthday and I received an email from my mother-in-law who is asking me when we should go and get your dress for your birthday because she knows how much I love dresses. (laughs) No, I'm like, oh my goodness. I wonder whether I would have been able to see that and appreciate it so much if I had still been in that negative, you know, focus towards them. 
a probably be thinking, oh, she, what does she want? She wants me to buy, she wants to buy me a dress. What does this mean? I'll probably make something <laughs> negative out of it. <laughs> Before, so but it feels it feels like such a relief to see the good in them and to actually start seeing how much more good there is to be enjoyed and appreciate them. That's so sweet. I love it. She wants to buy you a dress for your birthday. It's, it's uh-huh. yeah. She wouldn't have offered, I don't think, if you had, if you had made this shift. I, I mean, I don't know. Who knows? We'll never know. But I feel like you created this beautiful, uh, virtuous cycle of love with your in-laws. So that's a great yeah. story, Mila. What a yeah. difference. What a transformation. Indeed. Yeah. Thanks, Laura. Good job. Thank you. All right. Hannah's here. Hannah's got a story. Hey. Hi. Hi. I, I literally get emotional thinking of all the different relationships that this skills affected. But one specific story that I'm thinking of is I remember when a friend of mine was diagnosed with MS before I had the skills. And I read an article about this like regimen of vitamins that heal MS if you take it within the first few months of being diagnosed. So I decided that I'm saving her life. So I called her and I sent her the article and I told her she must take this. And her grandfather was a doctor and her grandfather said, this is just very expensive urine and it's not going to work. And we, I was controlling her. I'm like, this is, you could, you could save your life. You could be healed. And I controlled her so much until we just like ended up fighting and had a major loss of connection. And instead of being supportive when she needed support, instead I was like her doctor or trying to heal her and she wasn't listening anyways. And then once I had the skills, and oh, and then before I had the skills, anytime she would complain to me, I would like try not to use it against her. Like, well, you wouldn't have a mess right now if you listened to me, <laughs> as if like I knew best. And then after the skills, it was just so amazing to be able to just relinquish control. I don't know best. I have no clue if this works or not. I could share something I saw. And then if she wants to take it, great. If not, I could let go. And now I'm really able to support her when she shares her pain because. I'm not the expert in her life. And it's just so sad to think of how unsupportive I was in the past. And I'm so grateful that I get to be a supportive friend now. Mm. I love, I love that story. I can sure relate to like reading an article and think I know exactly what somebody else should do and sending it to them. So yeah, I feel a nice connection with you, Hannah, because I remember being that way too. And I I don't miss that either. It was kind of an unpleasant place to be, right? In a way. I'm trying to insist that somebody else should do something. And it sounds like you have a, a, a beautiful friendship back with your yeah. with your friend. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful story. Thank you. Love it. All right. Debbie's got one. Hey, Debbie. Hi. I used the skill wow. of gratitude with my first husband, who's the father of my two girls. And um, the older one got married and it was a very tense time and, you know, so-and-so wasn't going to come if so-and-so didn't come or, you know, did was coming. And so it was a really, really stressful time. And then my younger one was getting married and I had the skills then. And, you know, when I was learning the skills, I realized that I had never appreciated anything that their father had done for them or anything that he had done in the marriage or, or at all. And so at the wedding, they were trying to keep us apart, you know, and finally I was able to talk to him and the stepmother, you know, my daughter's stepmother during, during the reception. And I expressed gratitude for all that they had done for, for my daughter in raising her. And, you know, before I had just felt resentful that I didn't get to see her as much as I would want to see her and all of that. But I just focused on the gratitude of all that they had done for her and what a wonderful young woman that she had turned out to be and that they had had her most of the time. And so I gave them credit for, for what a lovely young woman that she was. And it was such a healing experience for just everyone for both of my girls for all of the extended family it was some healing that had gone missing for like 18 years you know it was like really a um really a miracle that everyone was now not tense that there was just peace in the whole family so 
Gratitude. Wow. Beautiful, Debbie. So generous to uh, find that gratitude and express it at a wedding where they were trying to keep you apart because their impression was it was going to go badly. It was going to be tense. And you yeah. showed up with your superpowers and made everything so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Great job. Good story. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. Who else has a story about using the skills with someone besides your husband? I have another story. Sure. <laughs> I have so sure. many stories. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this one is with my father-in-law. My father-in-law, he's very... Uh, like, he, he sounds like very aggressive. He speaks very loudly. He explodes like a volcano. And it's scary even being with him in the same room sometimes. And so usually when we're at the table and everyone leaves to do whatever and I'm there with him alone, it's very awkward. The atmosphere is very awkward. And, and, late, and it's hard to read him still. Ten years in, it's some, still hard to read him. And the other day, he bought something for my son, and I said I didn't receive gracious. I said something like, "No, we already have this, or you already bought this." And he screamed and he left. He stormed off and he left. And I kept analyzing what had happened, and I realized that I had not received graciously. And now I know the skills. So. So I told this to my husband. I said, I know why your dad left. I didn't receive graciously and I just respected him. And he said, yeah, but he's not your husband. You don't need to do anything. And so like to, to clean this up, you don't need to do anything. And I said, okay. So two days later, he was still not coming to, to the to lunches. And I said, I need to clean this up. And it felt like sand in my mouth. Like, oh, like, you know, when you taste lemon and like this, the horrible feelings, but I called him and I said, I apologize for not receiving graciously. And he got quiet. Like he didn't understand what was going on. He got quiet and said, and then he started ranting. And I said, I hear you. And I just apologize for you. And he said, thank you. Like I had the feeling like no one ever had apologized to him and this made me very sad. Yeah. And it's, it's not, our relationship isn't very connected, but it's smoother. Like I respect him and I understand where he's coming from, Mm -hmm. which is great for me. It is great for you. That is also um, so humble and generous and brave that you apologized to your father-in-law and that you, that you replayed the tape and really looked at your side of the street. You were so accountable. Yeah, I love that story. And I get that it's not a perfect relationship still, but but it sounds like, it, yeah, it's smoother and you must feel great about... I mean, it feels so good, doesn't it? Doesn't it feel so dignified to, to clean does. up your side? Yeah, yeah. Great story. Thank you so much, Shani. Yeah. All right, well, it's um, it's about all the time we have. Let's um, Let's go to some takeaways. I'd love to hear your takeaways from the storytelling today. Who's got a takeaway? All right, Melissa. I just loved, um, and I forget who said it, but she said, I feel like a powerful witch. Yeah. <laughs> that Inga. Was like, yeah. I'm like, yes, that is me. I do too. I'm like, it's been magic. It's fairy dust. It's <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. It's spells and wonderful. And that's just a fun way, fun little takeaway. I love it. It is. That was a great way to say it. Thank you. Thank you. Racina is here. Hey, Racina. Hi. Um, my takeaway came from Melissa's story. So thank you for sharing that story about uh, improving your relationship with yourself. But it was actually what you said, Laura, in response to that, which was, it's just an illusion that whatever we're suffering is because of the other person. It's, at the end of the day, it's all about us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Love that takeaway. Thanks, Rosina. Yeah, cool. All right. Uh, Hannah and then Michelle. My takeaway is how cool the skills are that they could even help relationships with mother-in-laws who speak a different language. I know. That's pretty powerful, isn't it? Stephanie's got a great story about that. Love it. Thanks. How about you, Michelle? 
<clears throat> my takeaway is the power of these skills with every single relationship and the power of a woman. Like, I'm just reeling on Debbie's story of how she turned around an entire family event with her strength, her gratitude. That was really special. It was special. It is amazing power. Thank you. Good takeaway. Inga. Well, I think my takeaway here is I realized all of a sudden, oh, my husband was right when he said, oh, who knows what you witches are doing there. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Do you remember? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I do remember that. Well, so we true. know what we witches are doing here. Like we're really <laughs> changing the world. <laughs> <laughs> or good witches. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's adorable. Thank you. Hi, what an Hi. inspirational, <laughs> such an inspirational call. I am very inspired by the SFP stories and I'm realizing how much I need to work on it for this weekend for my mother-in-law. <laughs> and I'm like so nervous and anxious. So I'm going to be doing a lot of like coaching myself, I think on a, the SFPs and gratitude because I'm super stressed. So, that's oh my, my gosh. Oh my gosh. It's like we put you on the hot seat too, huh? I know. You didn't even know it. <laughs> I know. It's like, oh my gosh, if they can all do it, I can do it. But it's, it's really, really tough for me, I have to tell you. I mean, with all the skills, I mean, this is a true test. This is like the first time off, like vacation with them after like almost two years. So, I've got to get my act together. <laughs> Oh, I love it. I want to preach kind of thing. I I totally want to hear how that turns out. That sounds great. (laughs) Love it. Thank you. All right. Uh, Shelly. My takeaway. Hi. My takeaway. I just was really struck by the power of focusing on the positive and standing for people's greatness. And I love, Laura, when you said um, we're choosing to love and that we create love in the world. And I just heard that in all these stories when people made a choice to choose to love instead of be critical or disrespectful or whatever it was, that it just totally transformed the situation. Yeah, I love Love that. Beautiful. Love that takeaway. Kathy Murray. Oh, I needed this call. You just have no idea. This was the perfect call for me today. And I've transformed my whole family and all my relationships, but really been struggling with one of my family members and it's because I started focusing on all the negative so thank you Teresa and thank you Debbie for reminding me beautiful I love that Kathy thank you your vulnerability and Yeah, well, I'm going to piggyback on what Kathy said because I have an opportunity in that area too to focus on some negatives. And I got very encouraged by what Teresa shared. That was the thing that I'm taking home today. And I guess we are like Glinda, the good witch in The Wizard of Oz because we help people. (laughs) But thank you so much for for sharing, everyone. That really was helpful. Beautiful takeaway, Love it. Thank you. Great call. Teresa. I think my takeaway is just how much being part of this body of women and being able to hear the stories, how uplifting it is and how it gives me ideas and inspiration about how I might be able to apply it to a situation and how universal the skills are in all our relationships. And So I'm just really grateful to be part of this group. Mm, Beautiful. Me too. I'm so right there with you, sister. Thank you. Julie. So I have been uh, binge watching the Medici's on Netflix, like knocked the whole thing out. And I was telling my husband, I said, God, if they put history like to a movie, right. It set it to music. And like, I would have aced, like I would have like gone crazy in school. Like I would have learned everything, retained it. Right. It would have stayed with me. And he said, why do you think that is? And I said, well, they give you the feeling and the motivation behind what's going on, right? Like you can feel it. You get the motivation of why these dates were important, why these people were important, you know, and I had just had a whole new appreciation for what was going on in the story. And so just sitting here today, 
um, the storytelling, it really has a nuance for me. Like it's different. And it's, I see that it's so important for why it sticks, why the skills stick with me is the story. You know, what is the motivation? What is the feeling that these, you know, that these women are feeling behind it? And why is that story important? Um, and so, yeah, I'm like, oh, it's like Hollywood. Like all of these stories, even today, it was like, I was kind of setting them to music and sort of like giving them, a, you know, <laughs> like a backstory. Um, and so I love these storytelling sessions that we do where we get together and we really share these stories because that's what sticks with me. Like if I'm washing dishes, I'm just in the moment. I really do think about all of your stories. And so I just want to share my appreciation for everybody who shares vulnerably and really gives us a story because those stories are really what stick with me. So that's really my takeaway is, um, yeah, I just love the stories behind it. Me too. I love a good story. And we sure got a lot of them today. Great takeaway. Thanks, Julie. All right. Oh, who's next? I don't know. Shanit. So my takeaway is that these skills are life skill. They they should I keep thinking that what would happen in our world if this was taught to in school, to our sons, to our daughters. But well, it starts with me and with all of us here in this community. So I'm so grateful to have found this uh cult, witch cult uh, to <laughs> Be doing the spells around the fire and just yeah, doing love. Um SFPs echoing around the, the world and the universe. Beautiful, yes. I love the image of us being a witch cult. Thank you. Okay, Gitty. So uh, yeah, my takeaway is similar to what Shanit was saying. Like I think that the common denominator with so many of these stories is um in all these relationships, we all thought someone else was wrong and we were being wronged. And then by, by using the skills and being able to look at ourselves, um, we were able to change things. So we weren't changing the other people, but by changing ourselves um, and taking responsibility for the relationships, we were able to make those big changes. Um, I spent so many years and so much pain blaming other people. And it's so nice to be able to to own that and stop blaming and be accountable and and see what we could do to make the world a happier place. That is the most magical of the magic skills, isn't it? Magic formulas that we have here. Yeah. Beautiful, Kitty. Me too. I spent a lot of years blaming. Debbie. I wanted what I'm taking away from this is how healing it is to just be in this group of women and um, just makes me feel better and energizes me. Even if I'm sort of like feeling exhausted or tired, just to be in this, you know, I was kind of exhausted when I came this morning and I just feel so much more energized and I feel like I've been healed from whatever was dragging me down. And so what a, what an honor, what a privilege, what, what a joy to just be able to be part of this group. I'm so, I'm, I'm just so happy that I'm able to be here. Love it. Me too, Debbie. Thank you. Beautiful. That's great. I feel the same way. Anybody else take away? Yeah, Kristen. Um, gosh, I got so, so much coaching in every story. It's amazing. And I, all the overarching takeaways I love. And specifically, I just kind of had realization that I'm giving myself a little pass to get onto my other son's paper because it's medical, right? So I'm giving myself a pass, which um, it, it had a story remind me of that. And because he he came right out and said, you're not a doctor. So my questions are quite um, off-putting. And so I realized he, you know, the SFP is, he knows what he needs to do. And I just, you know, that's, I've been on his paper. So I've got some cleaning up to do because there's some things I want him to do some tests and I'm, I'm not a doctor. And, um, (laughs) and also he's got this. Oh, so good, Kristen. That's inspiring. I appreciate your, the conviction you sharing that with us. So, so authentically beautiful. Really good. Your son's going to love that too, but so grateful too for 
just want to echo, you know, what Julie was saying and what Debbie was saying about how much it fills me up and heals me and fills some kind of need that I have uh, that I, I was missing before I had all of you. So thank you so much. It means everything to me that you're here and telling these stories, being so authentic and vulnerable and, and so committed. So until we talk again, everybody, take good care of you. If you'd like to be my guest on the Empowered Wife podcast and share about how you fixed a struggling relationship using the six intimacy skills, I would love to interview you. Just go to lauradoyle.org slash podcast dash guest to let me know that you are willing to make a big contribution to ending world divorce by telling your relationship story. I look forward to meeting you. That's lauradoyle.org slash podcast dash guest. Listen and subscribe to the Empowered Wife podcast. On next week's podcast, we're going to discuss whether you should fake it sometimes. In the meantime, I hope you're having lots of fun. Today's fun fact is that I get a lot of offers for 10% or 15% off if I enter my email. And yesterday I heard myself saying, I just want to pay full price.